Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Habs tonight. We got my main man, Shaner. We got my main man, Damon, down below. And uh, I want to send a congrats again to Anik on her new job. Um, graphic designer extraordinaire that she is. She's our Brendan Gallagher. You guys know her. You love her. But uh, we're proud of her. And she's uh, just starting her new job this week. So I uh, just want to give her a shout out, boys. And uh, here's what we're going to go through today on today's show. So what should we expect with under 10, 10 games left? The season's winding down, guys. It's, a, it's amazing to think that we've played over 72 games in this NHL season, which is crazy. Um, Sam Montembeau making price-like saves last night versus Winnipeg, my, may I tell you. Um, and then, of course, right into Carey Price. He's, he's going to return when he's ready, once he gets the green light. Once he gives Marty the green light, <laughs> that's what Marty said. He'll put him in. Mm. Uh, we're going to give a little Habs prospect update with Damon. A segment that uh, Damon's looking forward to. Going to give us some info on Brett Stapley winning the NCAA title with Denver University. He's a 2018 seventh round pick from Montreal. And we're going to go through that. He's a centerman, just so you guys know. And then some interesting information last night. So as of the Habs' current standings, uh, the, their 2022 top 10 pick from the Carolina offer sheet situation there was officially locked in. So that, that pick is officially top 10 protected. And now we have two picks in the first round officially in the 2022 draft in Montreal this year and then yes I'm going to tease this a little bit guys because the draft is what we have to look forward to at this point I think more than anything so I saw Shane Wright play live the other day here in Niagara I'm going to tease that a little bit as I'm releasing a video on my channel later today um, so anyway let's start off from the top boys so uh, what should we expect with under 10 games left for this Habs team based on this season that they've had yeah I think we're going to see a lot of line combinations and a lot of different names, uh, call ups, call downs. Things are going to move around because Marty wants to find chemistry coming into next season, right? We're still looking for that one winger with Suzuki and Caulfield. So he's going to try Pitlick. He's going to try Anderson. He's going to try some new guys as well. Uh, so that's really what I'm expecting for the next 10 games and having fun. You know, the guys are out of the playoffs. They have nothing to lose. They just go there, play hockey, and enjoy their 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 job, really. So um, I'm expecting some some fun games. Hopefully not hopefully not too many wins because we still want that uh, top three pick. But uh, no, I think I think it's going to be a, a fun time. Yeah, what I expect for these next uh, nine games is to be uh, fun uh, hockey and more and uh, more of an audition for next year to see who fits on what line best and who deserves an NHL play a roster spot next year. Mm -hmm. As I'm sure we know, the Pez dispenser uh, has been scratched recently and he deserves a roster spot and we'd love to see him back in the lineup and hopefully MSL make it happen. Put the Pez dispenser back in the lineup. That's something we can hopefully can expect, and we can expect uh, players to just see alone. And we know he was sent down this morning, which could indicate that maybe Price is coming back. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but Ooh. hopefully he does come back <laughs> healthy. Oh, yeah, Yelonen is someone who deserves a roster spot, and uh, this is what the last ten games and I mean nine games are going to be the rest of the season. Just going to be an audition, and it's going to be fun to watch and see which players stand out best and uh, which free agents are not going to get re-signed and which free agents will be re-signed. And there's still a lot of them. We all know per Perot's UFA probably not coming back. Tyler Pitlick probably not coming back. Chris Weidman. Honestly, I think he would be an interesting player to have back this year. He moves the puck so fluidly on the power play, and a lot of players can le learn from his veteranosity and leadership, and uh, it's definitely going to be fun to see. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Chris Wyman's been underrated, I guess, on the power play in terms of how much he's contributed lately under Marty St. Louis too, right? So um, going to be interesting to see what the Habs decide to do with him, just with, you know, guys like uh, Caden Gooley maybe coming in next year, Barron maybe really starting to make his, you know, I, I wouldn't say first strides. He's already had his first strides in, in the first handful of games here, but but really uh, have Barron take the next step and and carve out maybe a bigger role at the Habs. We'll see. But, I mean, Chris Weidman's a veteran guy, so you can't really not consider bringing him back, Shane. What do you think on that? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on the money, right? Um, and who else we want to sign to, because there's a big pool of, of uh, free agents for this summer. So depending on on Kent and, and Jeff's plans, if Weidman is, is willing to accept a smaller contract, you know, less term, then I'd, I'd definitely be uh, inclined to sign him. Otherwise, might need to move on. Yeah, it's an interesting, it's going to be an interesting summer regardless of what happens. Mm -hmm. But a uh, quick shout out to Josh Anderson. So 100th career goal 
on a beautiful tip from Jeff Petrie. Guys, I was mentioning this like before we came on the air, but that was the happiest I've seen Jeff Petrie look <laughs> all season long. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. It's it's crazy. I mean, he's had a really tough season and there's there's definitely something we don't know, right? There's something behind the scenes. Uh, we know his family situation. They're all in the States right now. So it's definitely not easy for Jeff and, and he knows it too. But uh, no, it's, it's always had... Always a good thing to see him uh, smile and being happy. And I thought he had a, a decent game. Obviously not perfect by any means, but uh, no, he had a better game than usual. And nice, nice little shot to tipped on on Josh's leg or something. I don't, I forget what it was. Yeah, it went off his body or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, greasy goal. Yeah, good greasy goal. And also, we have to thank Nick Suzuki for, of course, winning the faceoffs and getting better uh, at them as the season's gone on. And uh, yes. PD with that beautiful shot and. Funny thing I should mention, of course, we all know about the tip, but uh, there's the iconic photo of Carey Price with Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki, and I saw the expanded fo- version of that photo, and Jeff Petrie was cut out, so I see why he was sad <laughs> for a while, but now he's happy, and that's good. <laughs> that was why, obviously. Um, that's hilarious, No, because I, I know Nick did the did the drawing, actually, um, so you can see that on her account, too, but uh, yeah, guys, jumping right into uh, Sam Montembeau, uh, so... Sam has come in and, and Jake has been great since he's been back. Now he's injured again, unfortunately. So couldn't be better timing maybe for Carrie to come back. But I mean, Monty was making some Carrie Price like saves last night. Shane, I remember you were you were the oh one who God. actually mentioned that. So that's why I'm going to let you talk on this one. Wow. Here. Wow. He blew my mind yesterday. I mean, Winnipeg is no slouch. Like they have some big guns there and, and he stood on his head. He played like an NHL level goaltender. So big shout out to him. I thought he was phenomenal, kept us in the game. Um, so really can't can't have any gripes against him. The, the three goals can't really do much against that. Uh, you know, well, is a Morgan Barron snipe and then Paul Stashny, same snipe. And then the uh, Svechnikov goal, you know, he was in, in movement. So, no, I really, uh, really appreciated his game yesterday. And hopefully we get to see more of it. He's also a free agent, so uh, we'll, it's, it'll be interesting to see what we decide to do with him. If he's in in the long term plans of the team, I really hope he is because I've enjoyed his game. Yeah, yeah he's really. Re- go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was gonna say it's truly a pleasure pleasure to watch him yesterday. There was one sequence in the second period towards the end of it uh, when we were down two, and he made three highlight reel saves in a row. I thought, wait, mm-hmm. is this actually Carey Price in disguise as Sam Montembeau? And I would not have been surprised if they uh, ripped off Montembeau's mask and it was really Carey Price under, but Paul Monty Russ Tyler, <laughs> Russ Tyler, Muddy Ducks too. Yeah, Russ Tyler, <laughs> Scooby Doo style. <laughs> he was just such a pleasure to watch yesterday, and uh, he made so many highlight reel saves you could barely even count them. Like so mm. many ten ball star saves, and he kept us in the game. And this game would have been over by the end of the second period if it wasn't for Monty. And Monty's for sure earning himself a spot as a regular NHL goalie, and it's a pleasure to watch what he's been doing under uh, us, especially under Marty San Luis as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. It's been uh, it's it's been hard to like because he had a, Montembeau had such a hard start to the season. So now you got to wonder what you're going to do with him because he's played so well. He's a homer. He's from Quebec, so you got to wonder what they're going to do with him. And I, I really hope that either way it works out for Sam. So that being said, a great segue into Carey Price will return when he's ready, according to Martin St. Louis. So we thought Carey was going to come back actually last night against Winnipeg or last week, but a non-COVID related illness kept him out. And Marty was asked directly about it. And he basically said, Carey's been in this league a long time. He knows when he's ready. So when Carey Price says, I'm ready, Marty's going to put him in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's a guy you can trust. You know, he knows his body pretty well. He's been injured a few times. So he knows when he feels 100%. And, and we really want to put him when he's 100%. Okay. Not even 99. We don't want to risk anything. We need him for next season fully healthy. Uh, so when he feels comfortable and, and he does need some games this season, I think in order to get his footing for next season, you know, coming in uh, cold next season, probably not a good idea. You know, we have Marco on the team who's a, a soccer goaltender and, and, you know, there's similarities between the two. And he said that coming in cold after a long stretch of time without being between the pipes is, is not a good idea. So if he can get a few reps in, there's nothing on the line here, nothing to lose, no pressure whatsoever. Just go out and play your game. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and maybe even tomorrow against uh, Columbus. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, 
I'm a big uh, person who trusts support Carey Price. Like whatever he says, I of course believe. And uh, if uh, he's not ready, I just let him wait it out. But ideally, in a perfect world, let's say he heals by tomorrow, I'd and he's a, over 110. percent I'd want him playing games so uh, us as fans and he doesn't have to and uh, Carey Price himself wouldn't have to worry about this lingering over the summer, as I'm sure we know Nick Kiprio said in uh, your interview with them, Dixie. And uh, <laughs> the key is is just to make sure that. Uh, He's fully healthy, and uh, we don't want him to re, uh, re- aggravate another injury or something. Mm. So, it's definitely going to be an interesting thing to see him come back. And uh, my, my my hope is that uh, he can come back and show that he's still the best goalie in the world. Yeah, well, in my in my case, I hope Nick Capriose is wrong because you know what, <laughs> um, I, I think that there's a chance that Carey could very well play next season, unless a team makes an offer that blows the socks off the Montreal Canadiens over the summer. And of course, if Carey first shows before the end of this season that he that he can still be Carey Price, that's where then teams maybe start you know calling, and then Kent Hughes has a conversation with Carey and go from there. But as long as Carey's still around, you know, I know he wants to win a cup in Montreal. We've heard John Lou say that you know friend of Habs tonight before, so I think that uh, I would love to see <laughs> to see Kipper be wrong on that one because I think that we would love to see Carey at least get one more go at the Stanley Cup with the Canadians. But it's only if an offer comes. Comes the Canadians' way that they absolutely can't refuse. That's the only way I think. Um, it, it's it's Carey's decision. Also, it, we can't forget that it's really up to him because of the no mm-hmm. movement clause. So, so really, it's one that we're going to see play out over time. And there's no real reason to rush it right now. And we, it's a feel good story for the Habs to see Carey maybe come back even on Saturday against Washington. I think uh, you know, Mister Saturday Night is what we call Carey Price, right? So yep. I think it'd be the perfect time for Carey, at least at the latest by Saturday. If 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 he's not back by Saturday, I'm getting a little nervous as to when he's going to come back. But that's what I'm hoping for is by Saturday. So all right, let's get into this with Damon. Uh, Habs prospect update with our man Damon. We should have like some music for this or something. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Special <laughs> intro. <laughs> that's some. That was baseball music from our end. Okay, so uh, Brett Stapley. Winning the NCAA title 2018, uh, seventh round pick with the Montreal Canadiens. He's a centerman. Reminds you of Jake Evans, um, Damon. So why don't you just tell fans about uh, this? This uh, this is a big deal for Brett Stapley and the prospect of yeah. the, or much of a prospect here. Yeah, he's definitely a very versatile forward, which you don't find very often. And Jake Evans, as I'm sure we know, is one of the most versatile forwards on the team. And the thing is with Stapley, he's not just very versatile. He has, in my opinion, a bit more offense than Jake Evans. As big of a fan I am of Jake Evans, he has a bit more offense. And uh, Interesting. he's play has a lot more power play. And uh, he plays also a lot of penalty kill as well. And five on five, four on four. You can play anything you want, play in any situation you want him, and that's the key with Brett Stapley. If we can lock him up, he could be a very good number four C or two C, or you can even play a wing if you want him to. But in a perfect world, we'd uh, sign him. I don't know what Kent is doing right now, but I'd uh, love to get on the phone with Kent Hughes and tell him, lock him up, sign him right now. We still have the contract room for him, and uh, he'd be a key part of Laval's playoff run if uh, we were to sign him. So that's my uh, hope here that we do sign him. Mm. From, yep. <laughs> from Damon's mouth to... Kent Hughes years. Any thoughts on that, Shaner? I, I'm not. I haven't followed Brett Stapley that closely, but I trust. I trust Damon's analysis. I think he's going to be a good, <laughs> uh, a good player. But no, I mean, touching on Laval though, uh, they're looking stacked. I mean, they've been what seven, two, and one in the last ten games, so they're they're on a roll and coming into playoffs. It's going to be exciting. It's something we can look forward to as Habs fans. Uh, we got young guys coming into the team as well. We signed Heineman. We might sign Stapley. Uh, Baron is likely going to come down to help uh, with the team. So uh, a lot to look forward to there. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to point out some stats. I think we got to look at some numbers for Brett Stapley here. Okay. I won't pull up uh, hockey DB directly, but I just want to point out some things. Now, Brett Stapley isn't the biggest guy. Uh, He's five foot 10, 173, uh, 173 pounds, but I want to look at his his numbers and uh, specifically for this season in 41 games played guys, 18 goals, 25 assists, 43 points in 41 games with the university of Denver. And this is all building from the ground up from 2018 when he was drafted. So in 2018, actually, let's start there. 32 games played, five goals, 14 assists, 19 points in 32 games. Uh, next season in 1920, 35 games, five goals, 25 assists. So more more on the assist end there. And then the COVID shortened season, only 13 games played, four goals, three assists. And then again, 21-22, 41 games played. 18 goals, 25 assists, 43 points in 41 games. So the progression, the progression for him has been steady and he's a plus 22 this season. That's the highest uh, his plus minus has ever been as well. Damn. So Point per not, game. not, not bad numbers That's there. It. Can't All right. That. 
So I, I like what I'm seeing, at least in terms of the numbers. I, I can't I can't lie. I, I haven't seen enough of them uh, as much as Damon has. But that's why we that's why we go to Damon on that segment for the prospect update, as he does in our group chat too. You're always on top of Damon. <laughs> so, gentlemen, uh, the Habs 2022 top 10 draft pick is solidified again, according to friend of the Habs tonight show, John Lou. So um, just want to read uh, John's tweet here real quick. As you can see, after last night's result, Habs' maximum place in the standings will assure them of keeping their top 10 pick as a condition in the Dvorak trade. Montreal will transfer its first-round pick acquired from Carolina in the unmatched Kotkaniemi offer sheet to Arizona. But again, we still keep two first-round picks, and one of them is top 10 prote protected, as we see from John Lou here, boys. Bergevin, you know, even though he's gone, he's still giving us some gifts here. Uh, that was a <laughs> big brain move. When the trade happened, I did notice that. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. You know, I don't. I, I, at first, I didn't think we were going to finish in the bottom of the standings at the beginning of the season, but uh, now it's really coming in clutch. And you know, top ten in this draft is is actually really good. And we're looking maybe even top five. Uh, there's some big players aside from Shane Wright, who we're going to touch on later. I mean, we got uh, Slavkovsky, Nemec. Uh, Yurichek, Cooley, Savoy, I, I can keep naming them, you know, and I'm not the prospect guy here. So it is, this should tell you that uh, it, it's an exciting draft and uh, we have we have another thing to look forward to as Habs fans, even though the season's been kind of poo. Um, <laughs> we, we have the draft in Montreal and uh, that's going to be quite exciting. Now, just before Damon jumps in, uh, some of you guys are going to be attending the draft, right? Habs tonight will actually be there live, apparently. So we're waiting for you guys to grab your tickets, but that's going to oh, yeah. happen from what we understand, right? 100%. 100%. I will be there. boy, Atta boy. Damon, any thoughts on the uh, top 10 pick being protected here? Just a sigh of relief. And thank you, Bergevin, for implementing those uh, <laughs> safety mechanisms to make sure that we end <laughs> oh, up yeah. with the first overall pick, hopefully, or even a top three or top five, because there's still so many good players in this draft. And uh, the key is, in my opinion, in this year's first round is Number one, draft the best player available. And number two is Calgary's pick. Uh, towards the end of the first round, there's two right-handed defensemen that I really like. First one I really like is uh, Tristan Leno, the Gatineau Olympique. He was the first overall pick in 2020. He's a uh, steady two-way defenseman. Mm -hmm. And I think he would be a really good fit in uh, Montreal in the future. And then there's also uh, Ty Nelson of the North Bay Battalion. And I might get to see him in person in... Uh, in May because the 67s are going to be playing uh, North Bay likely in the first round. So that's definitely going to be another player that the Hobbs need to look out for with Calgary's pick. Ty Nelson. I, I've seen him around the OHL a little bit, uh, even specifically in Niagara. He was the number one OHL entry pick for 2020. I think it was, yeah. wasn't it? Ty Nelson was first overall in the 2020 OHL entry draft. So Jeez. that is, that is definitely a player that we should keep an eye on. Absolutely. I'm with, I'm with you on that. I'm like, I know that guy. Um, <laughs> so as we mentioned off the top, uh, yes, I did see Shane Wright uh, play live the other day. Um, and I'm going to be releasing that video, my live video coverage and just my you know brief commentary and whatnot from the game the other day here in Niagara. But uh, what I will say on our show, just briefly on Shane Wright after seeing him live, uh, he looked like a man amongst boys, to be honest with you. he uh, it, it was hard to evaluate him against Niagara because... Niagara is not in a great spot right now. So like it didn't take a lot to look good in front of them. The final score was 10, five for Kingston. So like, oh. yeah, it was, it was 10, two at one point, but, oh. but on Shane, Wright, I'll just, I'll, I'll lightly say here that uh, there's a reason he's still on the number one list for all the top prospect guys, right from Craig button, Bob McKenzie. If you go on um, eliteprospects.com, every list from every mm -hmm. scout has him listed at number one still. This guy is only 18 years old, has not filled out fully his frame yet. He's got eyes in the back of his head. This guy uses his peripheral vision to make plays that you just don't expect. So I really hope we have a chance at him. Uh, having Nick Suzuki and Shane Wright as your top two centers, let's go, boys. <laughs> like, I'm, let's go. <laughs> That's where I'll leave it. But <laughs> man, oh, man. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, for those of you that are enjoying the show, hit that thumbs up for us. Hit the like button to let us know that you like the show. It does help to spread to more Habs and hockey fans to see our show. And subscribe to the channel, of course, if you're enjoying it and if you haven't already subscribed. And get your merch. Boys, let's do our little hat thing that we talked about here. Here we go. <laughs> oh, baby. Bunch, 
<laughs> bunch of weirdos we are. <laughs> like, let's show them. Let's show them that we're really into it today. Uh, that's our that's our merch website, habstonight.net. You can grab it. Uh, and Nick, our graphic designer, is also a merchandise designer too. So check out our stuff if you want to be part of the team here. And um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate you jumping on, boys. This was fun as usual. We've only got a couple of roundtables left. There's only a couple of weeks left in the season. So let's enjoy this. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Cheers. Take care, guys. Cheers, folks. <laughs>